map it's being used on. All right, well, let's get underway. Game number two. If you wondered just how powerful the Delhi are, we're in the second game, and both players already looking to strike off their list on their bingo chart of Civs played as we move into Mongolian Heights with Delhi versus HRE. Spawning in on the left side is going to be Kaposh, employing the Delhi in his service, and on the other side, we will have B picking the HRE in the blue on the right side. Kaposh already moving up towards the middle with that villager for the dock. Probably an expected move from Delhi over here. A slightly old school way of approaching things on uh, this map, to be honest, because as we discussed before this game, this map is less and less about the Delhi simply because Delhi is so powerful on open maps like Arabia that people prefer to pick some slightly lower tier civilizations for hybrid maps like Mongolian Heights. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. Mongolian Heights as well. Like it, it plays towards that riverfront, but. It feels like Delhi is a sieve. They don't rely on the aggressive, like, fishing boat rush anymore, right? Like, this, this sieve has evolved. People figured out how to counter. Outposts are a lot more desirable and a lot more potent than the Karameda. So just relying on the power of your little pew, pew ships in the Dark Age doesn't really net as much as it used to. So it's interesting that he immediately rushes out for the dock. He will be able to get control of that center crossing. What I'm looking to see is whether B is going to try and react to this or if he's going to condense himself, right? Because we know what HRE players like to do. They don't want to come out and play, okay? They want to wait until they've grown up. Hormones have kicked in. They're a Chad, right? They're up in the castle age. That's when they ride out, when there's something on the map they want, aka those relics. And speaking of the relics, we have two relics on the side of B on the river. And the other three relics are all the way down to the south. All three of those are on the side of Kaposh, so it is going to be a little tricky for B to secure that third relic for himself, especially if Kaposh will start walling off those crossings, which is a definite possibility over here. Looks like B has opened with two scouts, which is something that you commonly do on this map. You do have a lot of extra sheep on the perimeter of the map, and you want to maximize the amount of sheep that you can acquire, especially with a civilization like the Holy Roman Empire that relies heavily on that sheep economy powered by the prelate. Most definitely, yeah. You just want to juice it up, keep it condensed. And as to be said, uh, in that regard, like, if he gets a lot of sheep back here, he has a prime placement for the Arkham Chapel to boost his gold, wood, and food lines, right, as he shifts it to the side of the TC. You can see that B's already doing that, in fact, as he's slowly, one sheep at a time, moving to that west and then northern corner of his town center to min-max the distance his prelate is walking. Bosh building up his food eco on the river right now. One thing that we don't really talk about very often on hybrid maps like this is that by building up your food eco, you're pro sort of preparing for that um, minute six to eight period of the game. Because at the beginning, you actually make your feudal age slower because you have to invest a ton of resources into making this dock. And of course, the fishing eco. And if you look at Kaposh's villagers, he is very heavily on the lumberjacking department because he has to chop the trees to get the fishing ships out. So it's going to take some more time for him to acquire the food and gold he needs for Feudal Age. And this could leave him a little oh. exposed to Feudal Age aggression. <laughs> and oh boy. He's doing it oh again. boy. B, this man is obsessed. I mean, I know in the Winner Stays On series with England, he done the Abbey of Kings, but that was once. This is... I don't know, two or three times, that is at least the second. I've seen it before from him, where he goes for the mine work palace of the HRE. More like mind game palace here, because I, I don't even, as an observer, as a person with God Vision, know what his full in plan is, because last time he done this, it wasn't even a feudal age rush. It just kind of was parked there in his base, and he got up to Imperial later. So right now, the way that B kind of envisions the Mindwork Palace is completely different to what we've all been expecting, right? Which is when you see someone drop this palace, it's because they're going through a Feudal Age rush. Yeah, in fact, the problem with the Mindwork Palace being used for a Feudal Age rush is that, of course, it decreases the uh, cost of the upgrades, but the cost decrease isn't tremendous, and you also have to keep in mind that you still need to make units, and those units are still quite expensive, and you're giving up on the Aachen Chapel. Now, I actually like this approach from B because the Aachen Chapel is a great landmark to boost your entire economy, but you can accomplish something very similar with, let's say, two prelates. And if you look at his base, he's right now able to empower his food villagers. With a second prelate around that Mindwork Plus, he could empower his Lumberjacks and Gold Miners. Mm. And what the Mindwork Plus could really give him is flexibility to start pumping out those upgrades if he really needs to start adding army. That could be at the beginning of Castle Age, like yep. sort of play a semi-fast castle and then just grab those ranged defense upgrades on the Knights immediately. But it looks like he's coming in for some more aggression this time. A stable is dropped immediately after hitting Feudal Age. 
Yeah, we'll see what the plan is. Probably you're going to spam out a few horsemen because obviously, you know, it used to be wait for knights, but now it's like if you get some horsemen out in the field, you can prep for that castle age grab on the relics. And, and that's something to highlight, actually. is An interesting thought around the Arkham Chap was like, in theory, you could boost your economy like 40 plus workers, right? So it's like four prelates for the price of one. But that's later on. One of the interesting kind of thought exercises to go through when you're trying to compare Mindwork Pass and, and the, um, the Arkham Chapel is that when you arrive in Castle, you actually want like four prelates, really, don't you, right? Like you want three or four because you want to go grab the relics. So realistically, this whole argument of, oh, well, if you go for the Arkham Chapel, you don't have to produce more prelates is a farce. You're still going to want more prelates to go Ooh. collect the relics anyway. Look at this. You are seeing the range defense upgrade coming in for B, and I'm starting to get the feel that he wants to rush down that dock potentially with those horsemen. Just think about it. You pull a prelate potentially to heal those back up, and the fishing boats don't have a ton of damage output. What's the mm -hmm. best way to try and take that dock down? Get some horsemen out with the range defense upgrade. The damage output of the fishing ships will be minimal compared to those, or compared to the ranged armor of those horsemen. So you could potentially take it down and you could heal your uh, horsemen back up. But it or, looks like B has something different on his mind because no. there's two forward voyagers being pulled here. Exactly. What, why go for the fishing economy? Because something I, I just noticed in Kapocha's base, oh. he has no military buildings. This is classic greedy Kapot. She's finally going to fix it with Rax being dropped, but the fact he waited this long means B now has raiding capacity within the Delhi territory. And he's got the range defense upgrade, so it makes it even more difficult for a town center to clean up those horsemen. And as you said, there is going to be barracks coming out, but there is already forward arch range coming in for B. I don't think that Kaposh expected this forward oh, wow. at all. He was so focused at that crossing. Kaposh oh, is going to lose it. the villager in the middle as well. Oh, that's a disaster for Kaposh right now. It is. More horsemen flooding in, and Kaposh just got the bad news. The scout moved across. He sees this archery range, and already B preemptively has countered him. And the only play he has left is this. He has to start strongholding up and putting outposts down in his primary base. And that's a problem. That's a serious problem for Kaposh because he could be cut off from gold. So no matter how good your food eco is from the river, you won't be able to get to Castle easily here. And it looks like he learned from a previous game the villagers <laughs> are being pulled for a riot. I was like, oh, I've seen this one before. He's going to chase after the, the one straggler villager. Oh, it looks like B didn't continue to pull him back. So he might, might end up sacrificing not only one, but two villagers here. Needs to be careful with the pursuit. The only good news for him is Kapoch, he hasn't got textiles. So these villagers aren't infinitely tanky. They will take a lot of damage. And if he doesn't address these units one by one as they come out from the archer range, he will find himself with zero eco very quickly. He also ran into the range of the town center from Kaposh, so he did lose two horsemen over there that could have been used against all those villagers. The spearman is also doing a lot of work here against those horsemen. But behind this one, Kaposh has a lot of idle time on those villagers. Luckily for him, he still has an untouched fishing eco, something that B is aware of. I wonder when B is going to react to that, because so far there was no aggression towards those fishing ships. Well, this is interesting from B. If you want to go in all feudal as HRE, it's critical you don't let your opponent get castle. And that's what he's doing, right? He's not letting his opponent get the sacred sites, and also he's not getting gold right now. So right now, Kapoch is also stuck in feudal town with B. However, B already has an army sitting right outside Kapoch's base. This is actually genius. And he's grabbing the marching drills upgrade, a very expensive upgrade in Feudal Age for B here, very heavy on the gold department, which means that he wants to stay in Feudal Age for long and he wants to maximize the damage output of this aggression. It's also possible that he will pop Siege Engineering and start making rams because, as you pointed out, Kaposh has minimal forces back at home. So if you can just start ramming down the, that mosque or the Dome of Fate, you could already inflict a lot of damage at Kaposh's base. Yeah, I mean, folks, you, you see these numbers right now. 15 military for B and, and 19 for Kapoch, but don't be deceived. 10 of those are fishing boats. They do count as military and eco units due to the fact that they're able to fire. So his army is, is baby size right now. And because it's mainly just spearmen, he can't actually address the archers. And even with some horsemen in the mixer, because B continues to flood out his own horses, that's going to be there to clash with him and ensure that he doesn't get to the squishy underbelly, which is this archer line. However, they will get to the squishy underbelly of this villager. And that'll be an easy chase down. So that is going to be the second villager falling on the front line. And he will commit to it. It might cost him the, the vanguard force here, but to deny more outposts going down, a worthwhile endeavor for the Delhi. Exactly, especially because B has no more villagers up front over here. So he's going to have to pull villagers from all the way back home to get those towers up here. 
As you said, Kaposhi's forces will be sort of isolated over here, so those will likely get cleaned up. But I kind of like the move from Kaposh to pull this force away, because he's forcing B to pursue, and this gives a bit of a breathing room over here for Kaposh back at home. And let's not forget that he still has a great economy. It's 42 against just 29. Even yeah. with the Prelates boosting the eco of B, that fishing eco is starting to have an impact on this game for Kaposh, as he's banking up a lot of food. Oh no, the villagers! <gasps> Kaposh didn't see them! At the crossing, he just ran past with two more villagers. He's pulling more to just, just advance the the outpost line. But it looks like Kapoch didn't notice on the crossing, instead just running past them with the double horsemen. And that is a missed opportunity. That's something that's going to come to bite him in the ass in the next few minutes if more of these outposts go up, because this is classic B. He's already riding in onto the eco lines with the advantage on the horsemen count. He'll see the opportunity to strike into the villagers. And no textiles upgrade means they're going to get butchered. Army will repel him away for the moment as there's a few horsemen and spearmen here to force him out of range of the TC. But you're in trouble right now. And if these outposts that are now going to continue to be constructed continue to go up, this is classic B strategy. I will just pin you in and ensure there's nowhere for you to go. Behind this one, B is losing his gold miners back at home, though. It looks like he didn't notice those horsemen oh either. And he lost a lot of units in that battle as well. And once again... At the end of the day, especially with those four villagers potentially getting cleaned up as well, <laughs> you get the feel that B isn't able to progress deeper into Kaposh's eco, and Kaposh is able to maintain that eco lead now, and the army numbers are climbing for Kaposh, so suddenly, even without those fishing ships counted as military, now he's got a sizable force back at home, and B is just going nowhere at this point. Oh, wait, B finally noticed. Finally, after all that, he noticed when he had just six villagers left on that goal. That... That is a heavy hit right there. And it looks like he's going to be denying the outpost at the front line. He will be engaged. A lot of horsemen here on both sides. But the advantage clearly with Kapoch, as you said, starting to escalate that military courtesy of the efficient production, allowing him to just double up what he's getting out of one stable at a time. And that's a problem right now because B, he is at least wiggling his way up towards Castle, but it's not going to be an instant arrival. Right now, he kind of has to double down and replace the lost forces. Otherwise, he runs the risk of Kapoch just marching right across the center of the map and arriving in his base before he's ready. B is ready to go up to Castle Age, and it looks like Kaposh is slightly over-investing into army here, potentially, because he's still popping out horsemen. He found himself a gold mine at the back, so he's no longer reliant on the one that's exposed on the front. But as you see, Kaposh's food count is actually rather low, which is... A little surprising given how much fishing eco he has, but that's because he's investing so much into those spears and the horsemen, whereas B realized that, okay, Kaposh isn't moving out of his base, so I have my window to stop making army and just get towards Castle Age, and if he can beat Kaposh to castle, those first couple of knights arriving could do a ton of damage at Kaposh's eco. Yeah, there it is. There's the notification. He's ready to go. Uh, no more surprises here. It's going to be back to the standard HR rebuild. It will be a Regnant's Cathedral being dropped. And the importance of this posturing, it means that he's in a good position to try and get his hands on multiple relics. He does need to be careful in the south where there are horsemen waiting. In the meantime, he needs to be careful where his four bases. He did get the upgrade onto the outpost out and garrisoned in the, the archers. So this should be hard for Kapoch to assault. And right now, B is wasting a lot of his opponent's time with this wraparound with the horsemen. He's not looking to engage. He's just looking to buy his time so he can be pulled apart by the outpost. But finally, the army's going to fall. And with this many horsemen here, they should be able to get rid of the fourth base. But instead, Kapoch says, no, I know what's happening. You have to be teching up. That army was not big enough. And instead, he will march straight across the river and straight towards B's base. That's the thing that he needs to do. He's realizing that his opponent is aging up. And behind this one, Kaposh is on the way to Castle as well. And this is exactly where he wants to be right now. He's intercepting the Prelate on the southern part of the map as well. And now you get the feel that B is just getting suffocated out of map control because Kaposh now has a gigantic army, whereas B's got nothing on the battlefield. B will try to switch into barracks, but from this point on, the mobility factor will be heavily in the favor of Kaposh. Most definitely. It's the case of the sacred sites as well. So Kapoch just getting a ridiculous amount of gold trickle as it stands. Wall all coming out is going to be a big fat whiff. Too many horsemen here. And B, I, I don't know how long you try and stay in this game. You, you need an immediate comeback because this horseman army is scaling. And now with Kapoch being up in the castle age and choosing to go into the house of learning, your time is limited. Once Homeblades is in the field, you're not going to be able to take good traits. And look at the southern anyway. part of the map. Oh, the Wolo? The Scholars are able to pick up the relics immediately. Ooh. Wow. Uh, yeah, as you said, he's been denied there, and he couldn't even get the cheeky Wolo play. Had he to convert those horsemen, maybe this is a different factor. But as it stands, B is pinned in, and at this rate, he's only going to have one relic to his name, one relic that he still needs to bank. Well, that's happening. More prelates just being butchered. 
These prelates who... Oh my god, no, he sent the wrong one over. And he'll garrison him, but as soon as he comes out, he could easily just die. And it looks like, luckily for him, Kapoch wasn't paying attention as he peeled away, but... This is frustrating. B really has nowhere to run, and as soon as he finishes tapping this woodline as well, that's going to be a new entrance into his eco lines for Kapoch. And the big thing here at this point is that B is just struggling with population right now. He's at 46 population over the 80 of the opponent. And if we look at Kaposh, he's got both sacred sites. So the sacred site countdown is going on and he's picking up the relics. We're seeing something very similar to the previous game. The Delhi player able to sit on those sacred sites and also secure the relics. That's going to be a gigantic lead when it comes to resource income. Look at that. 700 gold per minute and 600 food per minute. Whereas B has a combined 400 resource per minute if you combine his gold and food income. Ooh. Oh, wait. No, ooh, that's bad. I'm sorry. I got mixed up. I thought closer to one was good. Maybe B thought that as well because it looks like he's going to zero very quickly at this rate. Everything is going to grind to a halt. The wood line gets pulled back. He's got some man arms out, but now that he sees Lancers in the field, really, what is your answer? You've already switched into the man arms, which haven't been upgraded yet. They're still early man arms because B has no money and no way back in. Mongolian Heights will go the way of Kapoch, and we will draw this up 1 1 apiece. But Delhi is now already out of the equation. In the most recent patch, the fishing was nerfed to be way less impactful, but that still doesn't mean that you can get away by letting your opponent have 15 fishing ships. B was trying to count on a very early aggression and just sort of catch Kaposh off guard. That was the whole concept, and it almost was successful. He definitely surprised Kaposh, but Kaposh could react very fast with the Delhi. And ultimately, the thing that resulted in the downfall of B was that Kaposh's fishing eco was never harassed. And keep in mind, B was also losing villagers at the front. So not only was he killing a couple of villas from Kaposh, he also lost some of his own forward villagers. And Kaposh's fishing eco was never touched. So in this game, throughout the entire game, Kaposh had the villager lead, and he's just able to leverage that. And despite the fact that he was behind for some time, he was able to catch.